<laughs> anyway, uh, we have a special guest today, and we're mm-hmm. so excited to bring to the Neapolitan Trifecta podcast our very first guest, Rusty, right? Our very first guest. He's a head shaker. He never answers. <laughs> <laughs> but we would like to bring to you Layla Hameen. She is an actress Yay, in Golf the Cincinnati area. <laughs> and Lana is going to go ahead and explain a little bit more about what Layla is going to be offering today. Absolutely. We are back to talk about women in the entertainment industry. And today we are going to talk about creating your own opportunities. And Layla has done just that oh, yes. with her amazing, wonderful one-woman show, amazing. Laid Off. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> it, is, it is. Wow. Hello, yeah. Layla. <laughs> I am so flattered, guys. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I am just going to take this little piece of fuzz out of your hair. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome We're to the podcast. Just keep it real. Yes. We're yeah. just keeping it real. Welcome now, to the podcast. Now, closer to perfection than she could ever imagine. <laughs> 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 Well, hey, it's a pleasure to be here for a, yeah, this awesome. lovely experience. We're going to come here and talk about women in the arts and creating our own projects. This is great. Yeah, I'm absolutely. very excited. So thank you, first yeah. and foremost, for having me. Appreciate it. You're most welcome. Oh, you're, thanks for coming. So you truly have been very successful in creating your own little niche. And yeah. not little, because it's getting yeah. bigger and bigger. Heck so it's yeah. growing. And you are you have done this from ground level. Boom, and you're really taking it and starting to move forward with it. And we are hoping that you will be able to give the audience some pointers and tips on, you know, your successful moments and some of the trials and tribulations of those, ugh, Mm -hmm. kind of could have done that a little differently. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, um, well, my show is called Laid Off. It's a one-woman show um, that I wrote, and I loosely improv, and I direct and promote as well. (laughs) So it's like a one-woman band, literally. Um, but yeah, I came up with the idea after I got laid off from my full-time job <clears throat> and, I uh, was a little depressed and, uh, was looking for a job and I was reviewing my resume and at the same time I was reviewing the resume of my life. So I was going literally from childhood through adulthood and I said, I should write a one woman show about this. This should be interesting. You know, I'm only 30, but I've done a lot of really interesting things and I've had some Pretty uh, traumatic and slightly hilarious experience. <laughs> very, very hilarious. Uh, <laughs> let me let me emphasize the hilarity of her. Yes, hilarity. Alex and I had the pleasure of attending. <laughs> Rusty attended as well. Yeah, Rusty went um, too. The show at Women Writing for a Change. Yes, in Silverton. And it was fabulous. Yeah, it was fabulous. Thank you. She just. Tore she came out and just tore it up from the second she stepped down. Yeah, it's seen your show. So yeah. if someone were to come and see your show, what are things that they could expect from this whole transition mm-hmm. from childhood to adulthood? And you don't have to give away right. things, but like what what could they I mean, you said it's funny. They were saying it's funny. There's Alex funny like parts, yeah. It yeah. just it made it made you feel everything. Mm-hmm. Like every emotion. It's, just a good, it's, a great, it's good. such a good balance of everything and I yeah. think every point of the show has something. Really What's a part of the show that that you feel, I, and you're going to be connected to it because it is a piece about your life, but what is something that you feel extremely connected to or that has resonated in you, something that you weren't expecting, maybe? Um, I would say actually putting the monologues together because when I developed the show, I had an outline that I wrote and I wanted to pick out a little poignants from or points from my life. And one of them being... Um, my relationship with my father. Oh, okay. And that shapes a lot of my adult experiences. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really realize it until until I'm writing ideas down in the middle of a Honda dealership. Like, (laughs) oh, you know, I want this car, you know, man, this car is so horrible. The car my dad gave me was, you know, much better, but that was just like a pity card. And I'm like, wait, I have an idea. That was the car I was, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, you know. So, um, just connecting to the relationship I have with my father or, or lack thereof. Um, and how it affects me as an adult Mm -hmm. and how I'm starting to see myself a lot differently Wow! because of it. Um, And also just um, identity as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I talk about growing up not only being, you know, like a minority, Mm -hmm. but also being like the minority of the minority, (laughs) which is a term I kind of came up with because I just went to different schools and One minute I was in a predominantly white school and I was like the brown crayon. And then I would would go to a predominantly black school and I was like the girl who wasn't black. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it was very confusing, a little complex as well. 
Um, but I would say just connecting to it and just the, the raw emotion, because I literally feel everything when I'm out there. Mm-hmm. Do you so. feel more powerful now that you've worked through a lot of mm-hmm. those moments in your life, creating yes. these monologues in this piece? Yes. That's it, that. It gets a silent easier. Yeah. <laughs> it gets, because when I first started, I was going out to different open mics, and I would, you know, be around all these, you know, poets that did all yeah. this, like, poetry, this deep, heavy poetry. And like, I'm like, slam poetry? Yeah. And, stuff. and there I am, yeah, I'm like, I'm crazy, an actor, yeah. and I have a monologue to share. And they're just like, okay, who's this actor? And then I deliver a monologue, and they're like, wow, they're who's like, that actor? Deep, you know? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I recruited a lot of friends, or not recruited, but I, I've gained a lot of friends from mm-hmm. being at these different open mics and um, just being comfortable talking about these things. And I'm like, well, if I can do it in front of a bunch of strangers right. in a dark bar where there's like all the stuff going on in the background and get silence from them after a couple of words, then mm-hmm. yeah, I can do this. But you know, it's interesting um, because a lot of performers, I know I did stand up for a, a period of time in my life and it's so, don't, we don't care about that. You don't have to say. I'm trying you to segue say. into, I'm trying to segue into something. <laughs> it, the thing that I always found the hardest is Telling jokes to, it's different when you create jokes or ideas or thoughts that you think are funny and you're going to tell, it's tell your family and friends. So I find it harder Mm -hmm. to do something like that in front of family and friends, especially this, because a lot of people know you and they don't necessarily know that side of you. Right. So you're delivering information to people that they didn't really know. Yeah. Right. And it, it was a little bit of a... A little battle, because I'm like, should I talk about that? Yeah, right, that's what my mm-hmm. question should was going to be, right. was that yeah. if, if while you were writing this, did you have moments where you're like, maybe I shouldn't yeah. bring this up? Certain And things. then kind of toward the end, did you were like, I need to do this for me, mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, maybe I should skip over that time in college where I had issues uh, with body image. And I'm like, do I really want to talk about that? And I was like, well... Yeah. It's important, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of girls can relate Absolutely. to that. and. Right. You doing these shows are going to be like, wow, she overcame that and she's doing yes. great things. So there's a lot, I mean, a lot of girls struggle, but body image is probably yeah. one of the biggest mm-hmm. things. And that's one of the things that we're trying to achieve here is to have people like you and ourselves to show everyone that, you know, you can speak out and you can be comfortable. It might not be easy at first, but you shouldn't be apprehensive because you're afraid of what someone's going to think. Right. right. You know, and Lana, you talk about this a lot. You talk about, you know what, you have to do what you have to do for you. Yeah. You can ooh, sorry, Rusty. <laughs> you have to do what you have to do for you. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? Because it kind of Yeah, it ties right into creating your own opportunities, mm-hmm. I think. Um, if you're gonna sit back and you're gonna worry about what everybody out there is gonna think when you walk up there to that mic on open mic night, mm-hmm. if you would have sat and processed all of that about, ooh, look at that group of seven guys over in the corner. They're gonna, they're gonna judge me because of this, or because yeah. of my hair, or because of my face, or you can't do that. You have to just forget everything mm-hmm. that everybody else mm-hmm. thinks, and you have to do what you need to do for you to move forward and conquer all the goals and things that you have planned for your life. Oh yeah. Because when it comes down to mm-hmm. it, in the very end, it's your life, not those seven guys in the corner, not right. Nancy's, not mine. Right. It's yours. Yeah. And you have to do what makes you happy and healthy. Yeah. And I think this has made you very healthy. It has. And it's it's been an interesting conversation piece for my family, too. Oh, sure. Because well, I, I discussed I imagine, yeah. domestic yeah. violence, you know, growing Jeez. up with that, you know, and how it indirectly, indirectly affected me as a child. And my family were just like, are you really going to talk about that? Really? Like, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Has it been good <laughs> you know? for them also it, for it, you to be so... You know, like, not super open talking about it, but mm-hmm. I mean, like, actually saying the words, because I feel like sometimes the people that deal with that, families try to just hide it and block yeah, it and don't want to talk exactly about it. Is. Yeah, they, so now it's like, not that they're forced to talk about it, but now it's like you're talking about it, so mm-hmm. the conversation is there now. Yeah. It has, because, like, my mother was really concerned. She's like, are you concerned about being so open with people? <laughs> like, oh, my you gosh. have to be so yeah. open? It's I'm so, like, yeah. It probably felt so free yeah, out there was. to talk about that stuff. It was, because it's not like I'm doing a, you know, the Hameen story tell-all book. You know, this is all the drama in our lives. <laughs> that would be in 20 years. That's in 20 yeah. years, and I'm, like, <laughs> you know, able to, like... 
That would be an incredible <laughs> one. Well, I'm far, show. far away from my family. They can't find me. So no. Um, I'm super you're gonna move away with... and then do like all of this stuff that you've like encompassed into this piece. And it's it's, it's a, fantastic. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And and like, how long did it take you to even prepare for this? I mean, because some people might think um, one woman sh- one woman show, and they're like, well. You know what I mean? How hard could that be kind of thing? But, I mean, I know personally, we know. You've been working on this for a while. And I didn't didn't realize it until, like, a couple days ago. I was looking at my old journals, and I'm like, wow, this was, like, when? You know? Like, it hasn't been a year yet, but... No, but the fact it's getting there. I was literally, like, thinking of ideas of it. What was your process? My process, well... My big dream was to have it in, like, some big grand theater. But then I had to look at my checking account, and I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> you're like, not <laughs> Sometimes you're not winning. Exactly. Like, tea flipping no, gray. Right there it's, with like, you. it's like, no, I'll literally <laughs> show up and won't have anything to wear because I spent all my money for that theater. But um, <laughs> I, I'm looking at small venues or even some type of open space that I can rent. So, like, room in the writing for a change. Um, they gave me a really great deal. Yeah. And it was fantastic. It was like a big living room. And I'm like, perfect. And, and I you utilized, had such a great turnout. Great I setting. used it as like my set. Because yeah. everywhere I go, I want to adapt my show to the set. Sure. Oh, that's it's great. It's going to be different. Like, even when I go to Peak, it's smaller art gallery. There's art everywhere. There's no coat hook like I had at Women Writing for a Change, but there's a door that I could use for a hook. So I'm like, yeah, perfect. I'll rearrange it, make it work there. Um, so I'm looking at cafes and just small venues. And my long get, you know, on a, a wider mm-hmm. scale. Sure. And I want it to just keep getting bigger, but still maintain the intimacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I want it to, to inspire young girls and the, the shy girls, the awkward girls, the, you know, the un you know, the forgettable girls. But you know that. what? I'm going to tell you something. How, the way that I've heard people speaking of your show, I you could be at Carnegie Hall and that intimacy would be there. Sure. And I'll tell you, I've yes. seen other one-woman shows. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, um, yeah. Lily Tomlin. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. And you know what? I was sitting way in the back. Sorry, Russ. <laughs> and I was sitting way in the back and I still felt like they were connecting with me. Yeah. yeah. And that is what you're going to do. Because that's how powerful. I'm telling you, I hear really great stuff about that. Is what she so does. That is yes. exactly what, what you it is. do. There you go. And we're not yeah. just here trying to, you know, amp you up. You've already done that for yourself. We are yes, just definitely reinforcing yeah. what you have done and and telling people, other people, that they can do the same thing too. But it's yeah. work. It is. It's it's tough. And it's not just getting up and now I'm going to tell you guys a story about my life and just you know stare off into the world. Well, right. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to. You have to. You have to act it out the work. and really prepare yourself. Like yeah. It's a mental preparation before you even oh, definitely. step out there. It's like you have the to. The mental prep, too, even when you're writing it because you're yeah. you're going through, like we've already talked about, where you're asking yourself, should I do this? Right. Should I bring this up? Mm-hmm. Am I really still I affected by this? Something that happened so long ago. <laughs> right. But then you realized that you were. Yeah. And mm-hmm. things you do now are affected by mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah. So. I know that over the past two years, watching you in acting class and watching you in your show, that your confidence and self-esteem and bravery has increased incredibly wow. with okay. this. So. I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing to watch that transition. And I've only known you a short period of time since I started taking classes mm-hmm. with Lana, yeah. like maybe six, seven months or whatever. And. The times that you've been in class, it's fantastic. Yeah, oh, watching you. you work because you you bring so much to anything. Uh, seeing doing it, seeing work with mm-hmm. you is fun. It's fantastic. So, just I mean, I just can't even imagine where you're gonna go next with yeah. all of this. Because just keep just doing work. what you're yeah. doing because it's doing working, it, girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. trying. <laughs> I'm yeah. really trying. To just, <laughs> like just talk to anybody about it that's pretty much the first thing I bring sure. up people ask me so how are you yeah I'm doing the show called laid off um it's like <laughs> it's my boyfriend and my kid and all that stuff yeah you know I put a lot into it and yeah it's a little overwhelming at times sure but at the same time it doesn't feel like a like work it feels like just I don't know a great experience that I don't want to ever end yeah you know that's, that's the best way I can sum it up as yeah <laughs> wow awesome. and it's about yeah. your life yeah. So yeah. it keeps going. Yeah. Because everything keeps moving forward with you. Yeah. That's nice. Awesome. 